Hello. My name is Jonathan. Uh, I work on Glyph. Oh, nice. Um, I'm still waking up today. I'm kind of jet lagged, so hopefully the energy in here is still is still good. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, DeFi primitive uh, that storage providers can can build on top of uh, that we we've been working on with Glyph. Uh, and 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 just in case you haven't heard of Glyph, we we've been around building critical apps and tools for Filecoin for quite some time, since 2019. Um, we built like the first Filecoin wallet, uh, the Filecoin multi-sig, uh, used for like the ICO distribution and, and a bunch of other tools. So uh, if you haven't heard of us, hopefully you will soon, uh, but we've been around for, for quite some time. And the talk today is about uh, a primitive that we call agents and the agent architecture. And basically my, my case that I want to make today uh, is to tell you that agents are a really powerful DeFi primitive that storage providers can can build on top of, and and uh, for IO Net, like I think there's some really cool uh, opportunities to collaborate uh, in this architecture, and I'll, I'll I'll spitball some ideas here today as well. Before we before we dive into like exactly what agents are and um, and how they could be useful for building new business models for Filecoin storage providers, it's it's helpful to ground the context in in DeFi and over collateralized lending. So this is a really common pattern in DeFi, not, like not really even on Filecoin quite yet, uh, but on Ethereum um, and other chains. And so basically. Uh, what you can do in DeFi is you have some asset like Ethereum or Filecoin or Bitcoin, and you you lock that up into a vault or a collateral collateral contract. And by locking value there, you can actually borrow uh, a different asset, um, and and you can use that in in other DeFi protocols or or really for whatever you want. Uh, and and you know there's uh there's a lot of rules and and dangers and risks associated with this, but uh, it's a helpful primitive and, and it's, it creates interesting capital markets. So, oh, oh, sorry, did I, is everything good? Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, with, with over collateralized DeFi lending in mind, um, it sort of sets a context for what is an agent in the context of Filecoin and the FEVM? And the agent is really just a collateral smart contract for Filecoin minor actors. So uh, as a storage provider adds miners to their agent, they're adding collateral or in Glyph, this is what we call equity. So agents accrue equity and an agent with equity can actually borrow funds. Um, so this is how storage providers have actually been uh, oh, actually, yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit more about equity. Sorry, I'm still I'm still tired today too. So today, um, an agent collateralizes a miner, and it and in doing so, it accrues equity. And what does that mean? Well, equity is a combination of a miner actor's available, vesting, and pledged balance. Services that actually allow storage providers to charge for. Uh, services, we can add these uh, to the agent as collateralizable sort of primitives. Um, and so you could imagine a miner that is uh, renting out GPUs. This we can collateralize into an agent and allow them to borrow against it. Um, so today, uh, the agent smart contracts that storage providers are deploying are the ones that are borrowing from the Glyph pools. And so far, I think there's just around 3 million fill in, in equity value that has been pledged to agents. And today, like borrowing from Glyph pools is, is predominantly the, the primary use case of this agent smart contract. Um, but my case here that I want to make today is that we can build entirely new primitives on top of agents um, and collateralize new types of deal flow. And, and also just create new business models for storage providers as well. And this, this is where the, the agent starts to get interesting. So an agent smart contract, every storage provider um, has at least one agent. And the agent has a, uh, an owner and an operator key. And for the most part today, these owners and operators are, are uh, wallets or like EOAs. Um, but there's, there's a big possibility when we make owners and operators other smart contracts. And um, you know this is where we're, we're actually working with a few different storage providers to create new primitives um, by creating smart contracts that become the owner of agents. 
So um, we're working with one storage provider to actually tokenize their agent, which means they can kind of sell equity positions in their, uh, in their mining operation, which is really cool. Um, and they can kind of share revenue with, with uh, the, the folks that are buying in there. Um, another model that we're working on is called the, the guarantor model, where uh, one storage provider who has a, a minor actor with a ton of collateral or equity on it, uh, they can pledge that minor into a shared agent with another smaller minor and secure loans for the smaller minor to help them grow. Um, and as that smaller miner gets big enough, uh, they can separate themselves and, and create a new agent and borrow and, and so on. And so these are the types of new business models that we can build on top of agents. And it's still very, very new and very young and, and not easy to do yet. Um, but for us at Glyph, one of the focuses that we're, we're going to be sort of investing in moving forward is creating SDKs and easier tutorials and easier templates for storage providers to deploy new business models on top of their agents. And you could imagine a future where um, you have like an agent plugin store or like an agent sort of uh, wrapper marketplace where storage providers can tap into different revenue streams and, um, and new business models that help them grow. And this slide, so um, basically uh, anyone can deploy an agent today. Um, and what, what you would do if you want to deploy an agent is you actually just send like a, a Filecoin message to the agent factory and, and say, I want to deploy a new agent. And um, in doing so, you provide the owner key and the operator key for that agent, which again, could be other smart contracts. And so if you're interested in working on um, smart contracts that can plug into agents, uh, come talk to us because we, we can help. And, and I think there's some really interesting business models that we can build for storage providers. Quick water. Yeah. So, yeah, th this is kind of, um, I, you know, I think I wanted to have more time to dive into like individual use cases. Um, but for lack of time, I think we can talk about this more broadly. And I've already mentioned um, some of this now. But an agent wrapper is essentially a smart contract that fits the same interface as an agent um, and also extends the functionality to create new business models, right? Um, and I mentioned a few before, like the guarantor model, uh, tokenizing agent models. And um, I think there's just a, a whole realm of possibility that I, like, I can't even imagine yet uh, that I think we will see if, if we do a good job in, in experimenting and building new primitives. And so I think if you are interested, again, uh, we'd love to talk to you about building these things. We even at Glyph, we might incubate uh, a team or two or um, have, uh, have a grants program to help actually build and advise and, and uh, bring these new types of primitives uh, to market with you. And yeah, that, that was basically it. I, it's a pretty short talk, um, but I, I figured I'd leave some more time for questions as well, just in case um, people have ideas. And, and also, we'll be hanging out uh, around noon um, in one of these rooms, and you can come talk to us in person as well. So yeah, and, any questions about agents or agent primitives, anything of that sort? Any questions? So uh, what are like the biggest challenges of like deploying these agents today? Is it like connecting to the storage provider or like getting storage providers to like know about how to use these? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. It was uh, about what, what are the challenges with getting, I, I guess I assume like agent adoption. Um, yeah, so I think one is, is definitely education. Um, we've, we basically, every time we work with storage providers, it takes a little bit of time um, before they get up to speed fully about uh, all the things that they can do with agents. And even, even after they deploy an agent and start borrowing, um, sometimes it takes some time before they're like, whoa, I can actually do this or do that. It's a very flexible system. Um, and so I think, yeah, education is, is like the big one. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, I think, I think education mainly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because to me this was kind of like new that it's already like possible to do today as a storage provider. Yeah, it, it's definitely diff like today if, if you went out on your own and you tried to build like an agent wrapper or like a plugin for an agent, it would be quite difficult. Um, so we need to provide much better documentation and education and, um, 
and sort of, I think, SDKs, and, and so to create a full sort of cohesive experience with a web app and, you know, all those different sort of surrounding tools, it, it would be pretty difficult today. So I think that's why we feel um, we need to invest more, you know, resources into uh, making it easier to, to deploy agents and also uh, wrappers and plugins.